In order to extract a specific signal from a spectral signature, many spectral indices can be computed. When looking at the signature of the green vegetation on the right, we can ask what is very specific to the spectral signature of green vegetation. On one hand, the strong absorption providing a very low reflectance in the visible band more specifically in the blue and the red band, due to the chlorophyll absorption with the pigment capturing the necessary energy for the photosynthesis. On the other hand, in the near-infrared domain, a very high reflectance value is observed due to the spongy mesophyll linked to the internal structure of the leaf. This contrasts this behavior with very low reflectance in red and very high reflectance in near infrared is the basis of most vegetation indices. The most popular one is the normalized difference vegetation index, computed as a ratio of the difference between the reflectance in the near infrared minus the reflectance in the red on the sum of both. This is a so-called an angular index, because when we will see the evolution of the crop over the season, we will see the movement of the vegetation index around the origin according to the increase of the angle. Indeed, when the bare soil is observed, all the reflectance value align in the scatter plot matching the reflectance value versus the near infrared reflectance along the diagonal, which is corresponding to what we call the Bersol line. The NDVI is around zero. As soon as the crop develop, it will become greener and the NDVI will increase according to an increased angle up to an NDVI of 0.8. Similarly, we can build a normalized difference water index, which is based on the short wave infrared spectral signature. Indeed, we can observe three water absorption peaks corresponding to the different wavelengths. Based on this observation, the normalized difference water index has been designed as a ratio of the difference between the near infrared and the short wave infrared on the sum of both. This NDWI provides an information on the water content of green vegetation. The NDVI is the most popular vegetation index used for monitoring the vegetation cycle. Typically, a parcel first corresponds to a bare soil signature when the soil is prepared and the crop sown. Along the growing cycle, this spectral signature will evolve and turn progressively into a full green canopy spectral signature. Until it reaches the beginning of the maturity of the senescence, where it becomes more and more similar to a bare soil signature again. This most movement between the bare soil and the spectral signature of vegetation is typically on the basis of many vegetation indices. Some of them have been listed here and are based on the same principle, but each of them try to improve a specific aspect, like for instance, the SAVI, which aim to reduce the influence of the soil background reflectance on the vegetation index value. On the right side of the slide, an NDVI image, I light in dark the pixel without or with very little green vegetation, while in white, the green vegetation appear. The NDVI has been so popular 
that now inhaled instrument allow the farmer to measure it on the ground as well. Furthermore, more specific vegetation indices has been developed also, for instance, on the Red Edge region. The Red Edge region corresponds to the fast changing signature from the red to the near infrared zone. Thanks to the recent launch of satellites like Sentinel 2 and Worldview 3, these vegetation indices can exploit the Red Edge region, which allow to, inf to capture the canopy chlorophyll content and more indirectly, the canopy nitrogen content. For instance, the index of the red edge position corresponds to the curve inflection points, which will move from one position to another along the wavelengths according to the chlorophyll content. Many very specific indices have been de derived from this region, the red edge region, in particular because they are less affected by factors like soil background, sun incidence intensity, and the viewing geometry. You can see here a list of them. This slide showing the NDVI value and the NDWI value for a given agricultural landscape illustrate what you can do yourself if you go on the Sentinel-2 playground, which allow you to select your favorite place and look at the different spectral indices value for a given Sentinel-2 image. You can even compute your own spectral index using the custom tab, which we will recommend to compare to the actual image that you can also display. This is a very nice way to get familiar with the content of the various indices that we presented here. As you will see on the Sentinel-2 playground, many images are covered by cloud or impacted by atmospheric perturbation like haze or aerosol. Here is an NDVI time series for an agriculture season in Senegal. As observed from three different satellites, MODIS at 250 meters in green, Landsat 8 at 30 meters in black, and Sentinel-2 at 10 meters in blue. The solid line follow the most cloud-free images, while all the blue triangles, for instance, correspond to the Sentinel-2 images, which are largely affected by cloud. You can check in the subset of the image how many times haze and cloud impact the surface reflectance. You can go to this ASA platform to select your own area and visualize any NDVI item series for your period of interest. The normalized spectral indices tends to minimize the residual atmospheric perturbation and the angular effect of the satellite observation, which is actually linked to the bidirectional observation, in fact. At the bottom, you can see an illustration of two images of the same field, but taken from different viewing angles. On one side, one is bright, the other one is dark, due to the angular effect of this bidirectional observation. This is a reason why it is of paramount importance to compute your spectral indices from only cloud-free surface reflectance, which correspond to the level called L2A. This L2A correspond to the atmospherically corrected surface reflectance masked by cloud and cloud shadow uh, screening. To conclude on the spectral indices, it is Important to mention that the spectral band number recorded for a given sensor are not corresponding to the other one. As illustrated on many spectral signatures here, the bands can be selected 
to be primarily sensitive to a very specific component of a crop or to be very specific to a given stress. Therefore, each sensor has its own set of bands which can be combined into spectral indices. This is why you may find very useful the index database, which provides the formula of more than 300 indices for most of the existing satellite instruments. Thank you.